Hello dear students, I welcome you all to the discussion on quick solutions of All India Cash Test Series Miracle 2019-21. This is the test number 2, particularly called C and D and this test was conducted on 10th of November 2019. Dear students, let us proceed to the first question of the test. Question number 1 says, a body is thrown horizontally from a tower 100 meters high at t is equal to 0 with a velocity 10 meters per second. The velocity of the body is directed at an angle 45 degree with the horizontal at time equal to. Now dear students, as per the question, there is a tall tower of height 100 meters and from this tower a body is thrown horizontally with an initial speed of 10 meter per second. Now dear students, the initial speed is in the x direction if x is taken to be the horizontal direction. This particular component of the velocity remains constant as there is no acceleration in the horizontal direction of motion. However, the velocity's component in the vertically downward direction can be written as a function of time to be equal to vy is equal to gt where vy is the speed of the particle in the vertically downward direction g is the acceleration due to gravity and t is the time at which the velocity or the speed is being calculated. Now dear students, these two velocities will be equal when the net velocity will be directed at an angle of 45 degree with the horizontal which means that ux will be equal to vy which means that 10 meters per second will be equal to gt. Now dear students, the value of g is given to be equal to 10 meters per second. Substituting this value, we can get that 10 is equal to 10 into t, which means that t is equal to 1 seconds. Therefore dear students, the correct answer for this particular question should be option number 1. Now let us proceed to the question number 2. Question number 2 says that a particle is dropped from a height 20 meters. Apart from gravity, the particle attains an additional constant horizontal acceleration of 10 meter per second square due to wind. The displacement of the particle when it reaches the ground will be. Now dear students, as per the question, there is a height of 20 meters. And from the site, a particle is dropped. Now as per the question, apart from the acceleration due to gravity, which is given to be 10 meter per second square, that is an acceleration downward having a magnitude 10 meter per second square. There is an additional constant acceleration in the horizontal direction. And this horizontal acceleration has a magnitude of 10 meter per second square as well. Therefore, dear students, the motion of the particle in the horizontal and the vertical direction would be identical. Because not only the initial velocities of the particle in horizontal and vertical component are equal, that is zero, the horizontal and vertical components of accelerations are equal as well. And hence, as the particle attains a displacement of 20 meters in the vertical direction, it will attain an equal displacement, that is 20 meters in the horizontal direction. The net displacement of the particle will be the vectorial addition of these two displacements that can be calculated as d, that is the net displacement, would be under root of 20 square plus 20 square, that is 20 root 2 meters. And hence the correct answer for this particular question should be option number 2. Let us proceed to the question number 3. Question number 3 says, if x and y components of a vector p have numerical values 3 and 4 respectively, and that of p vector plus q vector have numerical values 8 and 7 respectively, then the magnitude of q is. We have to consider all the vectors in the first quadrant. Now dear students, as per the question, the vector p has an x component equal to 3 and a y component equal to 4. So the vector can be written as 3i cap plus 4j cap. Also, it is given that p vector plus q vector has an x and y component 8 and 7 respectively, which means that p vector plus q vector is equal to 8i cap plus 7j cap. Dear students, let this be equation 1 and let this be equation 2. On subtracting equation 1 from equation 2, 
we can write that q vector is equal to 8i cap plus 7j cap minus 3i cap plus 4j cap. Now dear students, subtracting the ith component with the ith component only and the j component with the j component only, we can write that q vector is equal to 5i cap plus 3j cap. The magnitude of this vector would be under root of 5 square plus 3 square that will be under root of 25 plus 9 that is under root of 34 units. Therefore dear students the correct answer for this particular question is option number 4. Now let us proceed to the further question of the test which is question number 4. Dear students, question number 4 says that Chota Bheem can swim with a speed of 10 meter per second with respect to river which is flowing at a speed of 5 meter per second. The time taken by the Chota Bheem in crossing the river in minimum time will be it is given that width of the river is 200 meters. Now dear students, this is a question from the concept of river man problem. Now, there is a river which is flowing with a speed of 5 meters per second. The swimmer can move or swim in water with a speed of 10 meter per second with respect to water. That is velocity of man with respect to river is equal to 10 meters per second. We have to find out the time taken by the man or the swimmer in crossing the river in minimum time. Dear students, we must know that the time taken would be minimum if the swimmer applies the strokes or tries to swim in a direction perpendicular to the river current. Now dear students, the width of the river is given to be 200 meters and the velocity of the swimmer in the direction of this width will be 10 meters per second. So the time taken would be displacement divided by velocity which will be 200 divided by 10 that is 20 seconds. Therefore, dear students, the correct answer for this particular question should be option number 1. Now, dear students, let us proceed to the next question, which is question number 5. Question number 5 says that consider projectile motions corresponding to two particles projected from ground. The maximum height attained from ground must be first option, greater for the projectile with greater time of flight, second option, greater for the projectile with greater horizontal range. Third option, same for both the projectiles if angle of projections add up to 90 degree. Fourth option, all of the above. Now dear students, the formula to calculate the time of flight of a projectile is T equal to 2u sin theta divided by g, where u is the velocity of projection and theta is the angle from the horizontal at which the particle is projected. Here g is the acceleration due to gravity. Dear students, the maximum height attained by the projectile can be calculated using the formula u square sin square theta divided by 2g where the symbols have the usual meaning as in the time. Now dear students, we can see that u sin theta is the initial vertical velocity which means that time can also be written as 2 uy by g and height can be written as u y square by 2g. Now dear students, in both of these expressions, the denominator is constant and the only variable is ui. The only way to increase the time of flight is to increase ui and as ui increases, the height or the maximum height attained increases as well. Which means dear students, as ui increases, the maximum height attained increases as well as the time of flight increases as well. So the projectile having the highest time of flight would have the highest maximum height attained. Now dear students, therefore the correct answer for this question should be option number 1. Now dear students, let us proceed to the question number 6. 